Hey, what's going on, guys? I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, happy uh, Sunday! And it's been a while. I haven't been making I, I haven't been making a video in a while. I made a video last week, but just not, I haven't making I haven't been active in the channel. I apologize for that. I've, I've been kind of busy. Um, I like to I like to make at least one video a week when I get a chance because my schedule is a little hectic right now. But um, let's get started on this video. So basically, I wanna make a video on group policy Windows 7. I just want to go over group policy just a little bit so you can have an overview of what it is and how, how it works and things like that. So for anyone that, uh, I'm going to type MMC. For anyone that, that, that doesn't know what group policy is, group policy basically allows you to, um, basically it allows you to, to um, restrict certain things on a user what Kevin what do you what do you what do you mean by that what, what what are you talking about so basically with group policy you can you can limit you put limitations on the user for example they can't go to certain websites um, the USB drives are disabled the CD DVD drives are disabled USB ports are disabled on the computer you could do all that on, on group policy um, you could you could limit downloads. You can't download certain things unless they have admin rights. Um, you could uh, you could basically remove the start menu from a computer if you want to. You could remove the login, log off, shut down, restart button if you wanted to. You could remove you could remove the sound icon if you want to. You could remove certain things and certain certain things that a computer does. You could remove it basically. That's what group policy is. It, it, you could do a lot of things on in, within group policy. The reason for that is is because um, as a as a as an IT person and as a person that works in information technology, you certain like users are not educated. It's, it's, to be honest with you, they're not educated, and you don't know what they're gonna do on their computers. They could download something and they could mess up their computer. So you wanna you wanna give them enough access so that could so that they could do their work. But not enough access that they could harm our computer. If you get what I'm saying, I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying, but that's basically what it is. So you want to give them rights to run certain programs, certain files, but you don't want to give them admin rights to download anything because they could download a they could download a file and that file could be a backdoor virus and then it could ruin the whole computer. So this is why you you that's why we have group policy in force on a computer. We also have group policy enforced on the computer because you don't know what that user is going to do on you don't know what that user is going to do on their end. So we, we have to like enforce certain rules, certain policies, and certain things. And you want to restrict URL as well, URL websites like you know Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so they could just focus on their work. You you want to have a proxy server. You want to limit what they do. So that's what it is. You you don't you don't want them to have um. Full admin rights for everything. You just want them to have the the basics and and for them to be a standard user, because otherwise you don't you don't you you basically mess up the computer. Like I, I was telling my friend the other day, and um, I have a friend that that works in a he works in a banking firm, and he he uh, he he's a he's um. He's a big he's a big boss for the for the banking firm. He's he works as a He's a project manager, so basically he was telling me he's like, why, why is my computer not why why can't I put a flash drive in here? Why can't I put a DVD drive here? Why do I need you to do it? Because I'm their IT I'm their IT guy, and and I told him I'm telling him you know you know we don't want anyone running DVDs or flash drives on 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 their end because it's all connected to the to our domain, and if and if you have a flash drive and it has a virus. You could potentially spread it in a network, and then you could destroy the network, and then you could just start spreading it from one computer to another computer, and that basically, that basically is a problem. Like, we, we we don't want that. We don't want that to happen. So that's why we have all these all these um, restrictions and all these things in place. So you you don't you don't have access to those things. So you need an admin to help you do it because we don't want anyone messing up the network. So. And that that's pretty much what it is. And I obviously I didn't say it like that. I said, oh, it's it's blocked because 
because of security reasons. I didn't say, you know, because I because of your fault, you know, I didn't say that. I said, because you never blame the user. You just, I basically said, you know, you gotta, it's policy. It's part of policy. So I follow policy. You follow policy. Everyone has their own policy rules and um, regulations and things like that when the company that they work for. So, and, and that's basically what it is. You don't want... You want to prevent the user from committing any errors or any mistakes because we're all human. Everyone makes mistakes. Even I make mistakes. No one's no one's perfect, you know? So that's why group policy is put in there for computer users that are not tech savvy and that could potentially destroy a computer if they don't know what they're doing. So you should have like certain things forced for them. Not to be, you know, not, not not because you want to do it, it's because you have to do it because it's part of a uh, policy and maybe their company wants to set up that way too. So you don't, you don't know what it is. So anyway, let's go over this real quick. So this is just a small review. So we have our software. We have a login, log off button. You can actually disable that. Security, public keys, deployment. Control panel. I'm gonna start opening all these tabs, so you could see what it is. Control panel. You. Can't even see this thing. All right, hold up. Uh. Yeah, there we go. Much better. All right, so. Yeah, so for control panel, you can add or remove programs, hide add programs from CD, DVD, ROM, add programs from Microsoft, hide and add new program pages, add or remove programs, go direct, go directly to component wizard, remove, hide, add, remove Windows components page, display, disable the display control panel, prevent changing color scheme. You got all this stuff you could do. Changing colors, changing screensaver, load a specific theme, printers, browser network to find printers. You could actually disable this. So if you don't want anyone to look for printers, because you know, some some people have printers. Um I'm, reason why I'm going over this is because I seen this happen before, or I see people that, you know, there's some people that have their own printer. So you would not want a CEO. A CEO has a CEO has their own printer. You wouldn't want a a one of, one of their one of their employees to have access to the printer, so you disable the browse the network to find printers because if they have the printer and they print from it, you know some doc some documents are very important. Some documents are very, very uh, it's the it's privacy. You know, it's very important documents, and that and that they've printed to the wrong place, and they print somewhere else, and someone else sees it. That's a problem. So you, this is why you put limitations on who could print from what printer. And who has access to what printer, and that's what it is. So, prevent additional printers, um, programs, control panel, language Active Directory, enable Active Active Desktop, disable Active Desktop, network, prohibit TCP/IP events configuration. So this is for um, this is all um, networking stuff. So this is all like. If you want to go to your network uh, properties and you want to change certain settings on it and you want to uh, do remote access, uh, you want to do certain things on the settings for networking, you could disable certain things here. Offline files. Let's see, offline files. Prevent action server disconnect. Share fo uh, folders. Share folders, obviously, it's NTFS, you know. Share rights, start menu. Oh, this is this is the best one right here. You could lock the taskbar. You could add search internet link to start menu. Remove favorites. Remove desktop programs. Remove picture icon. Um, do not search internet. Um, remove video link from start menu. Force classic start menu, which is the old two, Windows 2000 classic menu, I believe. Yep, classic menu for Windows 2000. Remove log off start menu, remove action center, remove the battery meter for like if you have a laptop or a computer that's plugged in <laughs> through battery, which uh, computers are not plugged in through battery anymore. <laughs> that used to be somewhat. <laughs> um, this is for laptops though. This is really more for laptops. So 
display. Yeah, it's more for laptops. Um, control to the or Control Tab Delete. Remove change password. Remove lock computer. You can remove all these things so you don't have access to those things. Because some people just press Control Tab Delete. They might kill a uh, kill a program or an application, or they might want to change their password or change the password. Is you can just keep it. Don't configure it because um, if you have a server, some servers they have. I think the password changes every forty five days. So it really depends. Um, How's it set up for the environment that you're working for? So, every 45 days, the password gets reset, gets changed. Some places, 30 days. Some places, 25 days. Some places, 60 days. It, it depends where you are. Um, driver installation, drive location, um, folder redirection, group policy, enforce shells policy. Internet, internet communication settings. Should be more stuff in here. Turn off printer over HTTPS. HTTP. I mean, do not process legacy first. Performance control panel. Prompt password on, on resume from hybrid suspended. This is like to run scripts. You disable certain things so they can run scripts. Windows components and uh, prevent turn off autoplay backup override browse menu turn off compatibility view prevent dating cookies so um, this is like, this is another one. So this is like, if you, if they go on online, you don't, you, you don't want them to erase their history. You could keep it, you keep it configured. So it doesn't erase the history or the passwords, all this other stuff. Um, some people just, some people, they, they want, they don't, they, they erase everything that they do on the history. So pretty much internet settings, offline pages. Toolbars. It's a lot of stuff here. If you look at it, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff here. It's just showing you an overview of what it, what, what the, the stuff, the stuff that this has. This is for Windows Explorer. Remove map drives. This is a very important one too, because you would not want you would not want a user to map to a a, a certain user drive or a certain share drive on a on the, on the computer because if they they might see uh, important documents for that per that personal user or there might be a share drive but that share drive is only for a specific user so you don't want them to be able to network the drive so. That's why it's important. Log in. Roll back. Mail. Network. I see a network. I see a network. Okay. See that prevent you see the Nvidia media information retrieval retrieval. Interface. Allow screensaver. Enable screensavers. All the settings. Whoo, it's a lot. Lock screen. Print users from adding, removing toolbars. Remove lock computer. You know how you lock a computer with, with um, Control Tab Delete. Oh, not Control Tab Sync. Sorry, uh, Windows and Locks key. Basically, Windows and Lock key. Um, you could do that. Window remove log off. So if you don't want them to have the log off button, you can remove it. Configure drives. That's right. Um, coding sign for the devices drivers. Restrict. Like we have CD, DVD, deny read access, deny write access, so they can't put a DVD or a CD. Um, custom classes, deny write access, floppy drives. Removable disk is, you know, flash drives, floppy drives, they have a floppy drive, tape drives, 
RPD devices. Um, yep, that's pretty much everything. That's pretty much what it is. So, let's not save that. I should even just shut down the computer. So that's pretty much uh, an overview of group policy. So they have these group policies put in place for you know for security reasons and for people not for people that are not really you know tech savvy. They might create their own. They might create a problem in the network. So you wanna you wanna have the users have specific rights to specific things for that for that reason only. You know so. That's what it is, and this is the reason why we have group policy in play. And you could do a lot. You could actually, when you create a group policy for a user, you could actually um, uh, run a GP Force update in the command prompt on their computer. So it could actually, it could actually work right away if you're trying to run group policy in the command prompt. You could actually enforce a group policy to work right away. If it's in a server environment, usually when you do group policy, it should work. It should work right away. It shouldn't take too long. Um, if you're doing anything with group policy, yeah, it should work right away. And um, and that's the reason why that this is in play. You, you you don't know what the users are gonna do. You could do group policy with one user in the server, or you could do group group policy within a group. You create a group and then have have that group have certain rights for certain things. And then you could create another group for certain rights for certain things through a folder environment as well. They have folders and do read and write, read only, write access only, do all rights. Uh, depends on how you want it set up. And that's pretty much what it is. So this is why it's very important that um, you know what group policy is, you know what DNS is, um, you know what all these other things are. This is some basics of of desktop support. You would have to know what group policy is at some at some job or some place that you're working for. You would have to know what it is at some whatever company you're working for. That you would have to know what group policy is and how it works. Um, you would have to know how to do passwords resets, um, how to remove passwords. Um, some user gets locked out of their computer. You have to you have to know how to remove how to um, change their password. Um, that's, that's desktop, that's desktop support, but desktop support also, it can involve, um, uh, C Citrix environment, the Citrix environment could also be involved in desktop support. So if a user logs in through a Citrix environment, you change their password and they should be able to log in, but they're having issues with it. Um, C Citrix environment is, is, uh, it's uh, it's more involved with, with they have their own man is is managed by a server itself is managed by a website itself so if someone can get can get into their certain files and certain things it's because you have to kill kill their session if you're using any of those programs or applications so anyway that concludes my video uh, rate comment subscribe thanks for watching my video give me a thumbs up if if you if you like the video give me a thumbs down if you don't like the video. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, share. And um, I hope you guys have a good day. Happy Sunday. Take care. Bye now.